right, so um, I <clears throat> figured I would just um, do this video kind of haphazardly. Um, I got another one of these Swede frame backs. I, I love these angstroms. Uh, I love the steel. Um, uh, you can get the you can get them at good prices. You know, this one though, if you look, you see the scales are like 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 some kind of you know homespun type of thing here and. If you look at the closure, the blade is really close to the cutout up here. I mean, I can get it to close a little more safely, but I don't really like that. The other end uh, over here, we have, have to be careful, we have some crud over here at the pivot, up in the tang area by the pivot, there's some old corrosion up in there see like all through here right that, that stuff makes me nuts and it doesn't need to be there um you can see the scales uh this is like i, I don't know what this is. i wouldn't be surprised to find out it used to be a coin or something and there's a nail driven through there's no real wedge it's just the way the wood was cut uh which is interesting and um then this side is a, another piece of, I don't know, scrap metal formed into a uh, washer of sorts. And you know, apparently this was a nail also. And then uh, tap down, if you can see uh, the mushrooming here, right? So basically, like, like I, I don't really want to do too much work to it because I think it's kind of cool the way it is. I'm not really happy about this flip floppy, you know, thing with the scales, but I could live with it, I guess, for a little while. But this end here has got to get cleaned up and I really don't want to pull this pin, but there's no getting around it. So what I'm going to do is, no joke, this is like a steel nail or something. Okay. The reason I covered that with my hand is so it didn't fly off and hit me in the eye. Yeah, the wood is a little punky, but not too bad. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. That should do it. All right, so there we go. No muss, no fuss. We got this bad boy open. Take out this nail. All right. I have no idea how long this has been like this, but uh, something tells me it's been like this for a while. That yeah, look at that steel. It's magnetic. It's a I'm going to go in here with a file and address that out and then uh, see if I want to like maybe put a, f a little finish on this maybe maintain the grungy look but stop it from like absorbing too much more stuff I don't know I'll check what it I out I decided to do all right was uh, I have one of these, uh, my dad would have called it a needle file. Uh, this is a particularly shitty one that I got from a Radio Shack long ago. Uh, I use it, it's like sacrificial. If I bust it, I don't care. I think the whole set of six of them cost me like 99 cents, and I think this one is maybe the last one. Might be a piece of a broken one kicking around. Anyway, it's neat because it's triangular, but what I'm doing is I have the flat, this side is flat, and then the triangular point is here. So I'm writing that on my thumb. And I have the flat up into the wood. Yeah, I could take this all apart and then recut it and refit it and do all types of really dope, you know, sort of Bob Vila shit. But um, I'm not really into it. <laughs> and I kind of like the rough nature uh, of the scale. So I think working the wood kind of the way it looks, like I'm working with the aesthetic, not against it. 
uh, is kind of making me happy. And if you look here, I mean, this is terrible. Look at this. This It's like not on center. So my Vulcan mind, as Nelson would say, um, wants me to cut up into this piece up here so I have a little bit more square to deal with, which means angling this a little bit so I can cut in that direction. And you can see got a little better. So I come back up in here and reangle. Yeah, you know, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better. I don't have that ledge sticking out really too much. There's a little bit in there, so I'm going to go back up and do a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way to, like, get a micrometer and measure this shit, but, you know, it's a razor, and I'm going to shave with it. And it'll probably get wet, and it might even rust a little bit at some point. And I might take it on a trip, and I could drop it on the floor. And like any number of things can happen to it, so I don't really need to uh, treat it like it's some sort of freaking museum piece. Anyway, because um, it's not. All right, so basically. Um, all I'm going to do, literally, it's a lot better. It's not perfect, but, you know, it's old, and the wood was never sealed, so for me to get all of that out, I'm probably looking at taking off too much material. Yeah, you know, I'm okay with that. See how bad this looks versus that? Yeah, I think it's 100% improvement. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a Wiley Coyote when he hits the uh, floor of the canyon. He leaves that outline. Of himself um, I don't know why I just thought of that anyway uh, you all know who Wiley Coyote is right of course you do um, yeah those cartoons have probably been removed from uh, TV due to like violence or not being politically correct or some other neurotic parent bullshit um, <laughs> sorry no I'm not really sorry I just it's a sad state of affairs where we're at now um, people need helmets to like go to the bathroom anyway um, <laughs> so this is like looking okay in here you know uh, it's not perfect but like I'm okay with it and um, I, I really I, I, I hesitate to sand the outside I really do <sighs> but I think I think maybe I got it a little because it's really fucking grungy, but I don't want to do a lot. I, I just want to take like a little bit off here, you know, and you know, in the antiques industry, they call this patina <laughs> and you pay more for it. Um, to me, you can call it whatever you want. It's grunge, but it's kind of like it's the history of the item. You know, it, there's a story in there, and I'm never going to know what it is because I can't go back in time, but. I think I'll just take a little bit more here. It's 
Because, you know, you got to admit, it's a little gross, you know. I don't want to make them too nice. I'm going in. See how it's in there? And I'm just sending over. So I'm letting the paper roll over that inside line and do some of the work for me. I don't want to clean them up too much. I don't want them. I don't want to get spoiled. I, it's actually kind of hard to do this because the. I'm giving you this POV thing. I don't normally do this. Everything is in a new place. I don't even have my mic plugged in. So if the audio sucks, I'm sorry. All right, so I'm just going to take off some of this grunge back here now. Not a lot. Not all of it. I, I want to remember the previous owners trials and tribulations. I want to be able to feel his his presence. Or maybe it was multiples. I don't know their presence. Whatever it is, okay? I, I don't want this to be like some sort of sterile bullshit that like sits on a shelf and collects dust or only comes out to like take pictures I can post on Instagram. I think this is good. I'm going to take a break now. I'm going to decide whether or not I want to um, hit this. All right, so I'm back and um, Decided to put some finish on the uh, wood scale, so um, just doing an impromptu thing there, so I don't know. Anyway, so I, I want to do something with the blade. I want it to be less grungy looking. Now, you know, you could start off, I could start off with 220, then go 320, then go 400, then go 600. But um, I'm not really feeling that motivated. I, I really don't want a um, bright, shiny thing. I, I just want to be a little less grungy. So I have two of the things that I, I do that with out here. I have this, and what I would do is um, I would put this on here, and when I'm pushing down here, I, I have sort of a, there's some safety here. See how I'm doing this? Don't do this at home, okay? I, I just know that this is safe, but if, like, this blade has a warp, it'll stick up and you catch your finger, right? But that, that's the deal with the rubber. Okay, back here there is going to be a place. Actually, it, it's pretty flush all the way around. So I can work on here, and I'm a little bit safer. But I don't like jacking up the rubber blocks with the sandpaper because I run off the steel and I screw them up. So I'm inclined to use one of these two pieces of uh, walnut, and either one will actually work pretty well. You know. Um, so if I take this long one, for example, right? And I'm holding it here. All right, you can hold here. Let me see. You get that. All right. Here, I have more stability. You have to be careful. You don't want to be bending your blade or anything like that. And uh, let me move this metal stuff out of the way over here. Okay. And now I have some like 400. So. What we got here. Yeah, it does a pretty good job. Yeah. Let me uh, fold up a piece here. Okay, I have three points here. And my finger back here. 
thing here and then I have that so I, I have a good amount of control on the blade you blink you screw up you wind up with a cut I cut myself all the time and all types of stuff I don't really you know get crazy over it but you have to be careful because you see up in there I got some some grunge I'm not happy about that <clears throat> Okay, back over to here. Let's let the sandpaper do the work, folks. Right, let's take a look at this tang. No, oh, big difference, right? Now, I started with 400. I could have started with 6. I'm going to go to 6 after this. But if I started with 2, then I have to go through 2, and then I have a lot of time on 4. Because you have to worry about the scratches from the step before. So 400 scratches are really shallow. So if you can do the work on 400, you know, you could be a little bit happier about things. Um, back over to here. Again, you know, if you're going to do like a mint showroom thing, which I'm not doing. Right. Now, this is a little insane because the blade is up, okay? And I have like no protection right now. So, um, this is definitely a primitive peep move on my part. In the real world, you would tape this. You would leave a little bit of space on top of the edge so the tape could flop back and forth, and you would wear gloves. Okay? What I'm doing right now is incredibly stupid. Okay? But I've, I've literally done this like a hundred times. And I'm very comfortable doing this stupid thing. I just want you to know that it's stupid. Don't do it. Always protect yourself. Even a dull blade will cut you so bad. You'd be like, I thought that was dull. You'd be like gushing like a stuck pig. Okay. In here, you can see there's some grunge there. Again, support the blade. I have the edge up back here. The edge isn't on the thing, so. It's kind of tolerable. Okay with that. All right. Now, I want to come back to this because I'm unhappy with the grunge up in this corner. Now I have the blade up a little bit, you can see. You have the paper folded so it'll head up into the corner. A little better. Basically, I want to get the rubber block corner of the rubber block up into the corner of the sandpaper. See? Not too shabby. Could be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. Take the sandpaper, I run it right to the edge. I take this rubber, I run it right to the edge. When I say edge, I'm going right to the spine. 
And if you match this to the corner, go right in there. What you're doing is you're using the corner of the rubber, you're using an eraser, to get in there up against the spine. You know, lining it up sometimes is a pain in the butt, and you know, you're not on camera, you can do this a lot easier. Um, I'm literally working with the iPhone between me and the uh, blade. Okay, back into the heel over here. Yeah, this could be better, admittedly. Okay, see I have a glint on the steel now. See? See how the, the highlight rolls? Okay, so you know I got in there, I cleaned most of that up. Now you're wondering about this. What are you going to do with them, Keith? Well, <clears throat> first I want to tackle the back of the spine, to be honest. So, and, and this the front of it itself <clears throat> and while I'm doing all this groovy stuff I'm contemplating the next part I'm paying very close attention to what I'm doing so I don't cut myself and bleed to death but I'm also got a part of my brain working on the next step I use a stainless brush just like this manually You can see that it gets better. Now there's something in here still. It's a caked up uh, crud. All right, so I take the blade because I may be crazy, but I don't want to uh, go to the hospital later. Um, I got that, and I have a firm grip on it, blade. I'm going to get a position, and I want to get it like right here. All right, I have my stainless wheel on my stainless brush wheel on my uh, Dremel thing, and I'm wearing eye protection. Okay, I peeled the tape back for the safety hazard at this point. See how I'm bracing with my, my thumb here. See how close I am to that blade? That's as far as I'm willing to go. Cause I don't... All right, so it's a new day. Um, some things happened, and I um, wanted to uh, get back into this today <clears throat> and see if I can like finish this up. Anyway, I think the blade came out really nice. You know, yeah, I could continue to work on that, but I, I don't need it to uh, be there. A uh, couple of things. 
I hit the uh, the wood scales here. It's a very soft kind of wood, like 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 that kind of spongy sort of pine type of thing. So it was just going to absorb oils and what have you and, and create havoc. So I, you saw I sanded it down and then I hit it with uh, some clear to uh, seal it up. And uh, I did use actually a bunch of coats and I spun the scale. I didn't take them apart because I didn't want to mess with this. Uh, recreating that would have just been impossible and it would have delayed my project and I and and I didn't need to okay because I'm not making a uh, a piece for insertion into a museum so I cleaned out this section here with a file and whatever and then I uh, sealed as best I could with a rattle can of uh, some rust-oleum clear put some coats on it and uh, it, you notice it's not perfect, I didn't sand it down, I'm not going for that look, I'm trying to stay with the aesthetic of something that's rough hewn and just totally proletariat working man's tool. This is a razor for shaving, not for uh, boasting about in your favorite form. What I had then was, um, after it was sealed as much as possible, uh, the area in here I couldn't get into, obviously, so I was concerned about that. And then it wasn't tight so I, I tightened it down before I tightened it down the scales were pinched together up here and I could have worked with it because the gap is ginormous but um, I, I tapped it down and but before I did that I dropped in a bunch of drops of CA glue create like a little bit of a seal in there it's gonna help the wood stay together a little bit and um, I think it just makes more of a continuous I'm not going to say waterproofing, but water resistance or whatever, I think it'll help. It, it's probably more than good enough for government work. All right. And, um, you know, this video isn't about like how to uh, create, uh, restore rather razors for, um, you know, museum consideration. This is like, you know, uh, I was a $20 razor with shipping that um, I'm going to get up to speed. And that, that was like my first hurdle when I got my first restoration, that was quotes, by the way. Okay, restoration. Um, I just bought an old razor and I wanted to get it up to speed. I didn't want to make like a, like a show piece. I just wanted it to work and I wanted it to be fairly presentable. So that's what this video is about, helping that guy get to that point. After that, you can take your skills and re refine them. You know, it's just, if you read Maggard's page on restoration, you know, he'll tell you. And, and I'm in agreement with that. And he's, I don't know if he's the first one to come up with that. There was another guy from Badger and Blade who used to say the same thing. You know, uh, you buy an old razor, you, you know, sending it out for an 80 to to $100 restoration might not make sense. If it's your grandpa's blade, yeah, for sure. But, you know, you pick something up and it's got like a blade that you can clean up and it's going to be really nice to shave with. But you paid 20 bucks for it you don't want to turn it into a hundred dollar investment because it's never going to be a hundred dollar razor so if you're looking at it from that simple pragmatic line of uh, thinking learning how to do what i'm showing you here can help you know um because these parts are not expensive now you know most people have some spray paint laying around sometimes you can just use nail polish and you sand it down put another couple of coats on make it presentable um you know, if you're going to go out and buy all the tools well, and the stuff, you know, if you want to go and buy rods, it's like five or ten bucks and then washes and another five, ten bucks and so on and so forth. And then that can add up too, but then you can do like a hundred razors. Anyway, so now I'm here. So I had this hurdle down here and I solved it with some CA glue. That's like crazy glue for those of you who don't buy CA glue. Uh, um, it is not your standard thickness. I'm actually going to have to open this up and I'll get to that in a sec. Um, the pin, the original pin, was not your typical 1 16th. A 1 16th rod will fit in here, but it'll bounce around like it, it's too big. I happen to have some of this laying around. This is 3 seconds rod. I keep this around for like old wedges and old things like this that I buy because I'm more into these than buying like, you know, really dope, handmade, you know, custom, psycho. I, I love those razors. I'm just... I, I can't spend that kind of money on a razor, so. And then I don't have anything to do. I just put it on the shelf and I look at it. This is like hobby for me, right? So, anyway, the, um, 
and this hole is closed up and I'll explain why. You can get it in there, but I don't want to force it. The, the pin wasn't like square, right? It was actually, it was square in, in this direction, but from here, okay, it was, um, I don't know if I can get far enough away, it, it was a little canted, okay? My minimum focus just maxed out, so you have to like trust me on that. Um, camera's already backed up to the edge of the table, so I can't go any further. So it was like, literally, where my thumb is was higher than the front, which is the facing side of the blade. So uh, what I did was I just put a 330 seconds drill in there and I twisted it and I, I, I pulled it up. Now what that means is one hole, maybe both, are now not going to be perfectly round. They're going to be a little oblong. In a perfect world, you would fill the hole and then redrill it. I don't have time or patience for that and I don't know that it would work anyway. Soft dish kind of wood. It might, it might not. So I just did that hack that I just told you about and I got the got it so the pin can actually you know be level and um, but then I realized the hole the wood in the hole was um, wide open the water is going to get in there it's going to absorb it and it's going to destroy this project now that'll take a really long time and if I keep it oiled it probably won't be a big deal but it could be a big deal because water is like invasive shit okay it knows no boundaries it does not care about your work your your feelings it's like I'm water and I'm going where I want to go remember that always we deal with it we call it wet shaving so don't go nuts don't act like you have to like you know blow dry your razor that shit's crazy right so what I did was I got some uh, I always have nail polish laying around and I, I put two coats in there. I, I just dabbed it in, the brush went in, the wood soaked it up, and then I took a toothpick, I went in there and I burnished it in, okay? And I did that a couple of times to like get it up into the wood. Um, the pivot pin doesn't have to rotate. In fact, it shouldn't rotate. So when it goes in there, it's just gonna be pressed up against that lacquer, and that'll be fine. But now, apparently, the dimension is a little tighter than it was before. So I'm going to be able to get this in there. I'm just going to not do it on camera. I, I need to be able to move with the, the camera between me and my workspaces. Too much of a pain in the butt. So there was that. Okay, so we have this lovely homemade washer, which I think is, like, freaking awesome because this just shows, like, a working man's intellect. He, he like... He didn't have the parts. This is probably done in the late 1800s or maybe early 1900s. And he took a piece of something and he cut it. And apparently, maybe it was a piece of a can because there's like an enamel finish or something. Right? So he cut a piece of can, he flattened it out, he drilled a hole in it, and that was his front washer. So I'm retaining that because I need to pay homage to that guy's intellect. Okay? But the back, if you remember, this was like a nail. So it was the nail head back here. Now, I was going to get a nail, I was going to go through all that shit, and I said, you know what, that doesn't, that's not in line with the aesthetic. The guy who made this, who did this work, he would not have traveled to a store to buy something to make this work. He would use what's on hand. So, I have a, a ton of washes, okay? And if you see this one, it, it's a little wonky looking right now, and I'll explain why in a sec. Um... This is a typical pivot washer. It's a number three. I put them on the inside of like wedges to keep the uh, scales from compressing and uh, getting worn out by uh, travel of the blade. So basically it's just a pivot washer. But I had to open it up to 330 seconds, which is not as simple as you might think. It's not a perfect world. And my first attempt initially was a fail, but I salvaged it and I'm gonna roll with it. In order to drill the hole out, remember this came with a 1 16th inch hole, my first attempt to drill through was to just drill through. I took my brand new drill, very nice uh, piece of equipment. What is it? The wall? I don't know. It's yellow. Anyway, uh, my old drill, my Craftsman, from the one I bought when I was a kid. I rode my bike ha across Long Island, like in, in the rain, with a coupon to go buy a drill for like nine dollars. I did that in like 1975. It just burned out. I've rebuilt it so many times. I I, I can't rebuild it anymore. Anyway, the new drill is psychotically more powerful. So it just ripped this, see I'm holding it with the plier? 
Now you want to use, if you want to do this, you need to have something that's really tapered so your jaws are not near the hole. Well, you shouldn't want to do that because what you'll do is, let me, let me see if I can show you, because I've done it. Now you can see it. My jaws up here are a little whacked. That is from me holding things in the plier and drilling because I do a lot of stuff like this. Those pliers have taken a hit. Um, those pliers are all but retired at this point. Anyway, so what you need to do, you can't just drill in like this because the bit's just going to grab it and spin it out and whatever. And that's what happened. So I had to unfold it and squash it down as flat as I can. And I think it's tolerable. And for this project, it's going to fly. And in fact, it's going to work. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to hold this. Where's the hole? Ah. You, you got to do that. Okay. You support it. You drill through. And it goes right in. Boom, done. Um, I actually would probably, if I had to do multiples, would probably travel down the block because the hole underneath it might cause this to compress into it. I, I don't know. I might try it. These are very cheap, but they're also very hard to get. <laughs> so I, I don't want to uh, ruin too many of them. So then all I do is uh, I put the washer up into the flat area of the wash of the jaws and I squash it as flat as I can make it and it's not completely flat and it's not completely perfect but nothing on this razor is actually going to be like that because I mean look at the scales I mean whoever made these probably cut that on it's not like ice cream sticks but <laughs> not too far removed from that um, and this guy here this pin, yeah, this is going to give me a pain in the ass now. Right, I just want this on the end so it doesn't get lost. It doesn't have to go any further. The other end is mushroomed already. I'm not going to show you the tapping. I have that in other videos and it's just like really annoying at one point or another. It's not necessary for this, but basically I put this in a vise, tap down with ball peen. I have it still out actually. Here it is. I use one of these guys. I think this is four ounce. It works for me. I have a lighter one. This actually does really well. Um, sometimes I use nickel silver rod. Sometimes I use brass. But this, I chose brass because simply I don't have 3 16th nickel silver. But now I'm going to get some. And I'll buy like, you know, a few rods and I'll just keep the parts around here because I'm probably going to do more work like this later on and at another point in time with a different razor and so on and so forth. So anyway, so I'll push this down so this rides down to here and one way to do that is to have a hole the size of the rod in the block and then I can push through. I don't have a 3 30 seconds hole in this yet. That's actually the hole I use for pushing washes down on top of a 1 16th rod. Um, I could use this but I don't think it goes through. Uh, so I'm going to drill one, so it's no big deal. Um, and this becomes a very valuable tool, this block. Uh, this is for other similar types of operations and uh, actually knocking primers out of the bottom of 20-millimeter uh, cannon shells. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's where I got to with this. All right. Um, I put a coat of, another coat of clear up on top here. And then I'll be done. I'll, I'll show you the blade, and then I'm going to hone it. And uh, then I'm going to shave with it. Hopefully I can get that all done for tonight's shave. If not, tomorrow's shave. You know, it's whatever. I got blades. I got razors. Anyway, I just want to show you this. And uh, let me put a penguin in to close it out. I know people ask me all the time, what's the deal with the penguins? It, there's no deal, man. It's just penguins. <laughs> I like them. They hang out. And uh, they make me feel good. They sit on my bench. See? I'm going to show you something. Watch. They sit over there. And, um, you know, put all three up. They hang out there, and uh, it's just like this tank, you know, whatever. Everybody's got stuff. That's mine. Anyway, talk to you soon. Take care. Right, people ask me all the time how I do this. Everyone does it differently. This is just how I do it. All right, I, I already got one in. I'm, I'm not going to use, like, you know, all the time in the world. See how I got? First of all, I'm holding it to wash it here. This is the pin. It has the outside facing washer. Well, in this case, it's not facing, it's the rear. 
okay I have a pivot washer on the inside and what I do is okay I, I'm looking at a better angle okay but I, I'm looking in this direction under here I can see where the pin is resting I'm just raising the scales enough so I can get in there and position the pivot washer on the pin. See that? Okay, so now I have pivot washers on the inside. Blade closes. I mean, you know, the, the gap for this blade is, is ridiculously large. And uh, all I have to do now is uh, fit this homemade piece into place. Right? And then cut and then tap down and I'll be good. So basically what I do is I ride the pin into the hole and I use the desk uh, to stop it from flopping around. So that's like my third hand. And then with this hand, I can raise and lower the scales just enough so I can get in with my needle nose, holding onto the washer, drop it down. Then I put the blade on. Then I adjust again. So there's just enough uh, pin. It's like a post, right? And you're, you're sliding this up and down. So you leave just enough post so you can get this on. Boom, you get it on. And then you close the scales on it and now everything is captive, okay? Now, it's not that captive, so you can really, really screw up right now. So uh, it, it's literally time to pay attention. And what I will do to um, help me out and avoid problems, I'll put a little tape on this to secure it. And uh, then I'll cut this down and tap it. Um, in this particular case, because of this uh, fresh finish, I will probably use console tape, which is low tack, not my masking tape, which is pretty grippy. And um, I, I hold it into position and then I can tap down and everything will be fine. Now console tape doesn't leave residue and it doesn't uh, cause any problems. If, if I let this sit for a few more days, it would harden up a whole lot more and then I wouldn't be so worried about it. But I'm literally doing this entire thing within a 24 hour time frame, less actually. So uh, I gotta be aware that um, this uh, low rent rattle can finish is uh, not 100% hardened and cured. It's, it's cured enough where I can handle it, but don't be fooled. Do not be fooled, okay? You can like really mess this up a little bit. And then you know what? It wouldn't be the end of the world. Then you just like mask it off and then spray it down and then you're okay. No reason to get nuts. Anyway, talk to you soon. All right, so um, back in action, you know. I have one more thing to do before I uh, start honing it, <clears throat> but this is all tapped into place now. Um, I showed you the pin setting. Um, I, I left a little bit of extra meat on top of this pin, uh, so my riveting, whatever you want, the peening, is a little more pronounced. I want it to look rugged and I wanted it to have the exact same original look or close to it. Um, there's the back and the washer set in there and the original indentation fairly okay. There's a little bit of concaveness going on but that's to be expected. This wood is, the, the wood is crap. You know, I, I'll admit it. And uh, a lot of people would opt to change this out and I just want to keep it going as long as possible. In here, um, Th those marks in there actually are, uh, you know, whoever cut these originally left it pretty rough in here. And uh, I've been in, I kind of manhandled it too. But what happened was, is after I put this together, uh, I don't know if you can see, but my clearance is pretty tight. Right when it closes. Well, now it's open, okay? But there was like another, like, I don't know, 16th of an inch in there on... Uh, this fake wedge thing. It's just the pieces of wood are notched more. There's no wedge. Um, so I went in there with a file and I cleaned that out and now I'm going to put like a, a hit or two of um, nail polish in there just to coat that wood up so it doesn't take on water. Um, I do not expect this to be the finality of this project. 
but um, for now it's like really good. I'm sure it'll last a good long time, all right? Uh, the tension is good. You can see the blade is uh, holding. So that is the result of, um, I believe, putting some finish on the wood and then using pivot washers on the inside. And then the extra bearing surface from uh, this enlarged washer, this homemade thing, probably helps also because now you have a greater surface area pulling in. And maybe if I use the larger one out here, it would be a little better because I can't really get it much tighter than it is. But I, I, this isn't about making a perfect razor. This is me showing you stuff I went through when I started out. I, I still do this stuff, but when I began, I had no tools, I had no know-how, I had, um, I didn't have that much money to invest in um, buying stuff to work with. You know, and people went to uh, working on gold dollars, and I, I hated those razors. Um, because I thought the steel wasn't up to snuff for me. And I love these Swedish razors because the blades are freaking awesome. So this costs, you know, a little bit more than a gold dollar. Yeah, sure, a gold dollar costs five, ten bucks. This was like, I don't know, twenty something dollars maybe. All right, so you know what you're getting into, I guess, is basically what I'm trying to say. But for me, the gold dollar was not that much of a cheaper option than something like this. And I think this is like mad cool. I, I think gold dollars are mad not cool. Um, and uh, it, there's probably 10 or 20 other ways to do what I did, so please don't think that I'm saying this is the only way to do what I just showed you. Um, yeah, it's about getting started, about getting in the game. It's about, like, not being, you know, you look online and you see people, like, showing you these, like, you know, wonderful, wonderful uh, razors made by, you know, Zawada, who makes, like, you know, the most gorgeous stuff I've ever seen. And, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's all types of makers, you know. Those things are big bucks, and I can't afford them. This is something like you know. This project can uh, is going to last me a real long time because I'm I'm not done. It's just where it's at right now, and I you have a couple of uh, days of focus and interest. You know, I had this for a couple of days before I planned my attack. I didn't just like get it and be like you know, oh, I got to run online and show people and whatever. No, um, you guys are the first to see it actually, and um, so. This is my hobby, is what I'm trying to say, you know. Um, it's not an art, it's a craft. Um, this is, like I said, not going to be in a museum, but it's good enough for government work, and now I'm going to hone it, right? And I'm going to shave with it tonight, I think. Now, to hone it, what I'm going to do, right? Um, yeah, I know, someone's going to say you took the edge off. Boo-hoo. Yes, I took the edge off because I wanted all that nasty tarnish out of the picture. I wanted to make sure I had nothing under it that was problematic, and there isn't. And I could have saved that, uh, that etch. But, like I said, it's not a museum piece. Sanding, though, uh, has compromised the uh, top line of the bevel, which isn't a big deal. You, so you can't really see it, but there is a semblance of a bevel there. I actually don't know how much honing this blade has been through because the spine wear is nearly non-existent, okay? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this. At the very least, I'm going to tape this for the 1K work, establish my geometry. In a perfect world, I would sit down and I would map out my bevel angle. But I, I know this razor and I can see that what's here, this meat, this dimension. I've had new old stock ones of these, so I, I know what I'm looking at. I really don't think this was home, all right? Which begs the question, why is it in these scales? Um, but this looks to be, to me, to be a full blade with what is left of the factory bevel. So I know I can put a roll of tape, a piece of tape on here. I can hone this. I'm going to change it by a degree. Not a big deal. And at that point, after I see my geometry, I'll make a decision as to whether or not I'm going to continue on tape, which I'd rather not do because I hate honing on tape. Uh, but if my geometry looks whacked, I may choose to leave it. I may actually wind up checking the bevel angle. I don't think I'll have to. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is I don't know yet what I'm going to do after I start setting the bevel. But leading up to that, I'm going to tape the spine and uh, get it on the 1K, or in my case, the shaft in 1.5K, and um, get it started. I, I want to get this honed by the end of the day. I have other things to do, so I may not actually get to finish this, but my goal is to try and finish it and uh, get a nice shave in. All right, that's it. Anyway, I had fun. I hope you had fun watching. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. And, um, you know, uh, 
take care. Talk to you soon. Remember, summer's uh, about to end, so things are going to be a little less uh, oppressive out there for those of you who've been living in uh, heat and humidity like I have. Uh, actually, today is quite nice. But anyway, get out there, get some honing, do some restoration, get some good wet shaving stuff in. All right? Talk to you soon. Bye.